Hey everyone, welcome to Beef's Golf School with American Golf. I'm here at the Shire and today my student is Oliver Phelps. Go on, bring it hey, in, mate. Yeah, I'm good, mate. Oh, I'm good. Course. Mate, we're going to have a casual nine holes. Yeah. Hit a few shots. Anything you want to know or learn today, just let me know, man. Okay, great, because my game is like this. Well, mate, standing on the 10th tee, I've pulled three without. I've copied you. <laughs> You've copied me. It would have been great in match play if I'd pulled three with and you had to go first do and hit three with. Is that a thing? Do you do that? It can happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah if someone's nosing in your clubs a few times yeah. and you're like, all right, I'm going to pull the wrong club here. Right, See if okay. they copy. So you're thinking driver now? I'm thinking driver, yeah. I'm looking at this wind and I'm going to change okay. club, I think, to driver. So I take it you're going to do I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> My driver is nine degree, stiff shaft, extra stiff shaft. Um, it's going all right, it's kiss of death, kiss of death, it's going all right. <laughs> oh, Can we use man. that ball flight like the idiot? Flight <laughs> good now. Right? So you know when you were lining that up there? Yeah. What are, you, what are you looking at, like what's your line? Are you looking like inches before the ball or? I'm more of a player who kind of like pick Pick like pick a target. So there I was. I was trying to sort of start at the left, the right edge of the the willow tree. Yep. There and obviously like we got strong wind off the left. Okay. You know the wind's going to push it, and you've got to stand up and commit to that line. Wasn't the best at all. Nice, no, fine though. Should be all right. It started on the right line. Yes, absolutely <laughs> fine. Nice, no, good shot. It's a damn tricky opening tee shot today. I'm trying to not be quick. Even if you start that, that sort of takeaway and just feel like it is. Like you said to me, after about eight takes yeah. of the intro, which you should have done, <laughs> half it, literally the same thing, and you could feel like you're going really slow. It won't be yeah. as slow as you think it no, would be, no, no. like you said, and just give it a go. Okay, right, okay. All right, perfect. I think you've hit a good tee shot there. Yeah, brutal. yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it's away from the water anyway. Yeah, all right, let's head down there. 108 yards to the pin, into the wind. Uphill lie, what are you thinking on this one? So this is where I'd be taking definitely an extra club or two here. So if I was going to hit this, I'd probably play it with a four iron. Right. And I'd grip down the grip okay. on this and just try and hit it a bit softer and hit it low. And I'd be, my line would be left of the tree because we know the wind's off the left, but that would be my kind of corridor. The edge of the green and that pylon would be my kind of corridor. And if it moves a little bit towards the pin, great. If it stays there, we're good. Okay. And that would be my kind of process. Right, OK. Grab the four iron. These shots sometimes, it's just taking, not hitting it as hard and just sort of hitting it sort of at 80, 85 percent and just more trying to control the club face on this. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Love it. So I, would, I would never think of playing it like that at all. Really? Yeah, it wouldn't even be my... I, I think like uphill lie, into wind. So with, with we, the uphill we, lie, is that why you're gripping down a bit on the club? Or is that it just, just gives you a bit more control. Yeah. I don't know if you could feel the difference yeah. then. It would just slow the swing down a little bit, get you more over the ball, and just try and give you a bit of control just to hit that flight. So, you, so you've hit like straight down the flag, but because you haven't hit it flat out, it's not going to spin as much. Yeah. So it's not going to deviate on the wind too much. Right. Yeah. That was amazing. Love it. Love it. I mean, that is an amazing <laughs> golf shot. Love it. So I hit my uh, pitching wedge, 135, and I've been told by my coach, Mr. Club, for, what are we, 85 yards, is it? This is not about 95, 95, but obviously it's playing a lot further. This was one of the parts of your game where you said you struggled, and I think this is a perfect idea, and you said, like, you hit the wedges quite high. Yep. And now obviously into the wind, we want to keep this quite low. So I think it's the perfect time to hit a couple of these and test okay. it out a little bit. Okay. Now, for me, it's all about taking wrists out of this shot and getting the ball quite far back in your stance. And all, all I'd be trying to do here is just make a nice, nice swing, nice sort of follow through here and not hit it too hard, a bit like you did with the with yeah. the four iron. Okay. It's a similar kind of... It's almost half swing. Yeah, almost half swing. You've got to kind of feel it out how far you're going to hit it. But like, it's more the, 
the technique of not hitting this too hard and just feel like your body's on top of this here. And what are you doing with, your, with the stance on that? So, because um, we're going to move the ball back a little bit, I'm just going to aim a little bit left to counteract that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because like, you've got to think when we aim, we've got like an arc, right? Yeah. So if I move, if I move it back, now I'm going to be sort of delivering the club earlier and it's going to be pointing right. right okay. So that's why we aim a bit further left to sort of straighten that out. And just feel like you turn onto it. You don't have to like hammer it. Yeah, nice. Should we <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Try and hit one a little bit lower. Okay. And it's more, as I said, like the, the technique and the basics and you're kind of really like feeling these shots. And you can try, you can move it a bit further back in your stance and hit it a bit lower. Yeah, nice. Really good there. It, it, it's one of them shots where you play a lot and especially when it gets windy, you play a lot and it doesn't look, it's not the, the magic trick shot or... No, no, no. But look where the ball's going. Yeah. And it, that's all that matters, right? Yeah, and I think that's the, the thing what I'm guilty of, I'm sure a lot of you know, social players are. They think they can do, oh, I've got to fly it, hit it hard, high. Yeah. Or try and just hit it hard with spin. You would it's piss so many people off with doing yeah, that. Yeah. When I'm standing up to it here, it feels really off kilter. Yeah, yeah, it will. But on actual touch, yeah. it's just gliding right off the club face. Yeah, lovely that. Really good there. Picking your line. Yeah. Is it divided in just like just one view, or do you pick like three different views, or where the where each break is on the green, or how do you? I'll run you through the whole process. Yeah, so like the first thing I'll do is like when I'm walking up, and obviously like going okay, this slope's going to go uphill. It's going to come back over. Then I'd have like a big long walk while I do that. And for me, sometimes with the longer putts, yeah, it always, it's it not looks getting. Different. Yeah. From here to there. hundred percent. Totally and it's not about being to the millimetre precise with these because speed is key. Yeah. Here. And I, I think so many times, and I'm guilty of it all the time, where like you're focusing so much on the line and worried about, oh, I've picked the perfect line here. And I'm, I'm like, what? 50 foot yeah. away. And now I'd come and have a look at this angle and I go, okay. So it's going to come up that slope and it should go a little, a little right, which is our left at the moment. And just kind of have a, a big long walk and sort of suss out the slopes. It's going a bit uphill and kind of like almost go so basic with it. Yeah. And I'll generally be now looking at picking something out, obvious, something obvious out. So I could pick maybe there's a little leaf. Yep pick that out or a bit of sand up yeah. there and I'm going well if I can roll my ball sort of on the inside of them that shouldn't be too far away right. look at that leaf look at the sand sort of picture that kind of curve yeah and now I'm just thinking speed I've hammered it cool the sand though I've hammered it lines good so yeah. pace is awful but Again, if I hit that yes. at good speed, I'm tapping yeah, yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah. Right. So the camera crew just walked right over my line. Yep. Getting it in there now. Well done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a person who lines the ball up? or I, I line, What I try and do is line the ball up, but in two points. Yeah, so yeah. So the first break and then second break. Yeah. Um, but again, then it, sometimes I think I'm trying to roll it over, say, that bit yeah. there. Is that too close though? No, I don't know. It's not at all. And like you can pick something, yeah, a foot away, 100%. Okay. You can pick something a foot from the hole. It's sort of, yeah, as sure. long as you're sort of getting your kind of feel and it's helping you, it doesn't yeah. matter what you kind of pick. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, great putt. Great putt, man. That is one hell of a four. That's not, that's not an easy it. hole, man. I'll take it. This one, yeah, man, go for it. This one, uh, again, like, especially again with the driver, I talk about this quite a lot, where that club's kind of got a pass. Yeah. 
if we get the hands in front here and it's like totally different you know like an iron you'll see like they'll call it like shaft lean yeah and that and they'll kind of trap the ball with a driver you want to let that club come past here and sort of be with you in your hands does that make sense yeah you don't want any compression of yeah, yeah yeah so you can like really let this go do me one thing try and hit this one high high okay yeah so again to hit it high you've got to let your hands come past you here and not not get ahead of it does that okay. make sense yep so yeah nice high one Yeah, lovely. Perfect. You feel the difference? Yeah, it's way easier. It, way smoother swing. It's it's more. It's not a technical thing. Yeah. It's like a a synchronized thing, syncing the swing. So yeah. like you've got a lovely swing, and all it is is if if you're a bit out of sync and your body goes first, you can't square the face up with the driver. No. So go. Okay, I'm gonna try and hit this one high. Use the wind. Um, right. It may sound silly, but are you teeing it higher as well? Yeah, definitely like downwind, I like to tee it higher and like really feel like that again, like you're hanging sort of, they say like that word like hanging back, but it's not sort no, of this way. No, no. It's just your arms will sort of pass your chest that way. Sure. And that's where you get like the sweeping feeling. Like I said, they're the two different, iron swing and driver swing completely different. Your one will be fine on the right and we'll find it. So let's go down there. How, how did you get into golf and start playing? It was, to be honest, it was, I was always exposed to it. So my dad played a lot, um, still does play a lot as well. He's one of these people who he's, he's going for a lesson this week. He's 71 in a couple of weeks time and he's always on the learn, like always trying to grind, you know. And that, I was always exposed to that. My granddad played, my other granddad played. So it was always in the family. Um, and then like anyone, I suppose when you're exposed to it, you have a tinker with it when you're younger. And then, so I was always involved with the game in terms of playing it, but I suppose in terms of taking it seriously and having proper lessons, didn't happen until I was maybe 18, something like that. Yeah. And then you suddenly go from a scrambling 24 handicapper and it, you, you slowly start to come down quite a bit. And it's just learning, learning those things. And that's never really left me really, because you still get that be it a low handicap or a high handicap, you hear a crunch shot, it brings you yeah. back more, doesn't it? I, I think everyone, everyone as well, goes through that process of starting off with a 28 or 36 handicap and then, yeah, having to work their way down. And that's what I love about golf as well, is because you can play with anyone Yeah. as well. And that's why handicap systems yeah, exactly. So yeah, exactly that. And there's, there's some cool stuff from it. I mean, my brother and I are really competitive anyway. So we've always been wanting to be a lower handicapper than the other. Um, Who's the better one at the moment? Me. That's why I brought it <laughs> <up>. <laughs> when we were filming the Potter films, we weren't allowed to do contact sport. So at school, you you know, you right, no football, no rugby, no cricket, no basketball, no hockey, anything like that. So golf was really the only go-to we could do outside of outside of anything really. Um, being in that limelight, such a young age, and having sort of rules like that, yeah. did you find that tough? A little bit, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, I was kind of happy with what we had. Okay, you weren't allowed to do that, but you were doing this on, yeah, on yeah. the flip side of it. And you do hear stories of some actors who, who maybe don't have that in a contract, and they get you know, a knee break or something like that playing. Yeah. And yeah, so I can see why they're in place. In hindsight, do I wish it wasn't there yet? Of course, because you want to be able to, to do yeah. stuff. But maybe I wouldn't have the same love of golf as I do if we didn't. Or I'd be like many of my old school friends now, where they're getting into golf now. Yeah. And yet, to me, this is the perfect day out already. Beef's Golf School is brought to you by American Golf. American Golf wants everyone to get involved and play golf. So give it a go. up to a ball say in a competition or anything when are you looking at it oh when you from, taking yeah notice? from sort of like three four yards as we walked up here the first thing i saw was like that looks like it's sitting well so immediately throw my mind into taking the slope out here yeah 
the one thing you've got to sort of worry about is a slope behind the pin where the ball's going to run off. And the only thing with throwing it up is that it's downwind. Okay. And it's not going to help it stop. I'd say there's two options how you can play this. And I'd either go, as I said, take the slope out, or you could play it with, I'd say like a pitching wedge or a 52 and just chip one into the slope and let it hop over. I'd probably have the face a bit further open and really trying to hit this up quite hard, like that kind of, okay. that kind of swing. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. And like, you can have the face touch open because we want loft here. Yeah. With your weight distribution, is it on your back foot or your front foot? I go more into the left side here. You want to be turning with your chest and finishing yeah, sure. here. So if you get it too far in your left, you can't move. So go six, yeah, go 60, 40. Yeah, there you go. I think that's the only way you could get that to stop before the slope. Because that was a tricky shot. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, that was why I said you've got to play it with a bit of height yeah. to get it to land soft. Yeah, yeah. So the other way's into the bank? Yeah, I'd go pitching wedge. Because again, it's, it's rain, it's quite soft. And I'd be looking just to sort of chip this sort of normally with a wedge. It doesn't have to be really low, yep. but you just want to sort of hit it maybe a yard or two just before the slope and just let it hop up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no one's going to play with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I think chipping is reading the lie, yep. what the ball's gonna do out a certain lie. Can I get underneath? No, so that forces your yes. option straight yep. away. And especially like chip shots like that. I, I think the tendency I see is that people get it too far back and really shoot it low. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be that aggressive. No. You just, you've got the wedge there, it's taken the loft down. You've just hit a nice little chip shot and you've got to tap it. We, we had a chat earlier about long putting as well, and like mid-range putts, if yeah. you're going to knock some in, they go in, but if you can get really good from this distance, yeah, it's, it's a game changer. Sometimes what I'll do to just check is I will come and have a fill and just feel something with my feet, just to see if I can feel anything different to my eyes sometimes. I don't see much in that. I'd be hitting that pretty straight. Uh, I'm going to be honest now. When I, when I knew that I was coming on, the last three nights before I go to bed, I've got one of those perfect hot mats. <laughs> we did. From one foot, six balls. Two foot, six balls. Three balls. Yeah, yeah. I feel a challenge coming on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, mate, talk to me about this new show that's coming up that you've been doing with yeah. your brother, right? Yeah, my brother, yeah. Fantastic friends. So we've been always really into travel like love doing it especially that just added on when we um were doing the promotional stuff through potter we would always be our first to put a hand up saying yeah we'll go to that from here we'll do mainly because we wanted to see the world and someone else is paying for it you know why not um <laughs> so i sowed the seed though of like wanting to go and, and do some more stuff so i noticed that when my brother and i went to different places or go to the same place we would want to do different things and so even though we look the same we've got very different ideas of what is a good time so i thought well, maybe there's an idea there um and then we thought well let's get a guest involved to make every episode different so yes we've been to done two seasons of it now we went uh season one filmed mainly around around europe and we went over to uh, st lucia as well for the final episode there and then beginning of this year we were out in turkey singapore which turns out we were there at the same time um yeah, it's crazy the show kind of features a lot of stuff like with I suppose like when you go anywhere, you want to do what the locals do. Well, I do at least anyway. Yeah. Um, I want to try stuff for the first time and it's okay to not get it because not everyone gets everything first time around, but at least you tried it. Yeah. Try the local food, try it. And we wanted to encompass everything what, whilst the whole family could watch it as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. We wanted to make it a show that everyone can watch. So yeah, it's been, it's been great. So it's uh, out in, in Europe now on HBO Max, which is, which is awesome. So yeah, it's good. Oh, definitely. That sounds great. And having that authenticity when you go to places I'm absolutely all for yeah, that. Do you, I mean do you find that when you're like away is it a bit of a traveling circus so you've got to try and get out of the bubble and, and always do trying to find the authentic food or the culture yeah. things like that and try and yeah just experience what that 
country or area city's about. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, sure. Nah, it'd be, uh, yeah, give you some ideas anyway. Speaking of ideas, what are you thinking here? Oh, <laughs> I'm not liking this I see at all. A good, I see the perfect <laughs> challenge. How's your flop shot game? There's no game there. There's no game there at all. <laughs> right, challenge, right, let's okay. do it. We've all been in this position before. Short-sided ourselves a little bit, not much green to work with. The only way I really see of getting that close is hitting it up, getting it up, getting it to land soft. How so, when you say getting it up, do you mean like up, up? Yeah, yeah, we're going to hit this quite high. First rule is how's the lie? Yeah. If it's sitting down or this, you can't slide under the ball, it's impossible. But obviously when you're coming out the rough, we can get under that to set the club. That is really open. Really open. And what we would do there is lower our hands a little bit as well. So once once we look once we open the club face, it will start pointing a bit right. We lower our hands, even it out, and now we're just going to make a real aggressive hit. So are you are you breaking your wrist before? Here, yeah, because we swing. I'll set this like the club quite steep on this, a bit like a bunker shot. Yes, yeah, it really yeah. is like a bunker shot, and just slide under the ball. Hopefully it pops up, and we can get it to land softly. Sure, and that's sure. the only way we'll probably get it close. Yeah. yeah so we really can get it up. Really through it, okay. And land softly. Yeah, nice. And we can really feel like that club is is at the bottom under the ball. Yeah, so I really want to feel like when you're having that practice swing, you can hear that like that thud. Yeah, nice. I can't even think of hitting the ball now. How this how the club is open. Yeah, it's just going to go, as I said, it's going to slide underneath and you can, you see how hard I've hit that yeah. and you can just, yeah. So was that just hitting the ground a bit too early? No, that was perfect. That was not having the face open enough. Okay. So again, the more loft you add, yep. the higher it will go, the shorter, okay. the shorter it will go. Okay, so so that was, that was a really good shot just needed more loft on it. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Yeah, yeah, so set the club nice and open and then grip it. So the key is not to have it square and then open it with your wrist, it's to yeah. set it and then grip it. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it was like that. Yeah. If you see, it's like a full swing, but look how quick you can get it to stop. Yeah, great. That how good is that? Yeah, that how good is that? Well, the fact that it's finished left of the hole. Yeah. When it's, I mean, the place is over there. I'm having this. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> I'm loving this. No <laughs> flop shot game, but sort of hit everyone inside mine. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've absolutely smashed that challenge to bits. I think I've given you enough tips for one day. Okay. I think we should just play this, this last hole outright. Yeah, what have we got? We got a par five dog leg to the right. I think we'll just take it straight over that trap. On the right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, let's right. do it. Lead the way. Lead the way. I love the way you've been playing, man. And no, thanks. Swing is it's, I think it's great. I'm not saying it, but I think the way you're explaining it is so much it's not too technical, if you know what I mean. For me, I'm just a feel player. Yeah, yeah. And it's like give me a feeling or yeah, something. What should that sort of feeling at the club or the ball or whatever it should be and I think we can overcomplicate it too yeah. much. He's crunched it. <laughs> I don't know what is down there. You okay. have you have the magic, the magical um, <laughs> laser. So I thought you were going to say one then. No, <laughs> I won't go in there. No. <laughs> I'm so pleased that I've done this whole day and I haven't made one. <laughs> Harry Potter reference, and you've been the one to do it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Should be absolutely Sorry. perfect too, mate. Sure. What right. have you got, mate? 142 yards, 142. straight downwind. I've got my, got my pitching wedge downwind, and I'm just going to play it at the flag, so I think we're pretty much downwind here. Love it. And I'm going to try and use this, use the slope, as you mentioned before. Oh, hello. It's got to go. Don't know, I think that may be short. No, 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 you're good, mate. Is it? 
Oh yeah. It looks about 20 foot, 15 foot. We'll just, we'll just cut that. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Wicked. Come on, let's see if we can make an eagle. I mean, we've played this hole really well here. Two perfect drives, two perfect wedge shots in. I've got about 10 foot. Oliver's got what, about 15 foot? About that, yeah. About that. Uphill. Come on, mate. One of these got to go. Have him hit it. Go! Hit it. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're, the, they're the birdie putts, though, you like. The yeah, ones yeah, where, yeah. I'll, take, I'll take those birdie putts all day long, yeah. They're the ones we like. Ah, oh, dear. That was great, man. Thinking more about the line than the, uh, the weight. Oh, you can't be disappointed no, I'll, with that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I was aggressive with it. Damn it. No eagle today, but I will take your, take your birdie. Take, take that. that. Mate, thank you so much for that. Mate, it's, it's been serious. a pleasure. What do you feel like you're taking away from today? Everything. <laughs> like, honestly, I know I'm just saying yeah. that, but like, yeah, short game chipping, the low punch shot into the green, reading the green. Yeah, teeing it, getting through the ball. Slopes, way more than I thought. Let me know how it goes in the future. Will do. I'm interested because you're, do. you're a good golfer, man. And nah, mate. That's awesome. Well, I'm part of the golf club, man. So 100%. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Nice Cheers.